Well, I'd like to tell you a little story. Um, about five years ago, we had an organization called Girls Who Code uh, start here at AppNexus. I think you'll hear from Reshma later on this afternoon, the, the founder. And one of the young women who was in that very first Girls Who Code class, named Diana Chris Navarro, spoke with me recently. And five years later, she's still in tech. She's in college and she's been doing internships. She works at Tumblr now. And I asked her why diversity and inclusion matters. Like, does it matter if organizations like AppNexus and many of ours actually focus on this? And she said, Brian, it doesn't really matter how great the fringe benefits are at an organization. If it's not diverse, if I don't see people like me working there, if it's not inclusive of women, then I'm not gonna take a job at that company. I need to see women being nurtured or I'm not gonna work at that company. And that was pretty powerful for me as a CEO. Now, as much as I believe that we should build equal, inclusive workforces, it's actually a business imperative. It's something that, if you look out in this crowd today, you see not just a bunch of women, but a bunch of successful women. Women that are role models, women that make other women feel like they too can succeed and thrive. And to me, as a leader, I can think of nothing better for AppNexus or my organization or the future of business or the future of New York City as a place for business than to see all of you here growing your careers, building your organization, networking, being strong, and standing up so that other young women like Diana can see that they can survive, thrive, and succeed as women in business. So to me, inclusion is a necessity. And I know we talk a lot about diversity, it's something that we can count. It's nice to say we have this percentage women or this percentage people of color. But I really think the hard part has been inclusion. How do we create a business environment where we know that historically men have had more leadership positions than today, men have more leadership roles than women, so that people can see people like themselves? And I say people very intentionally in the sense that this is not only about women, although obviously that's a very important part of this. I ask myself a lot, how can I as a leader make AppNexus a better place for anyone who wants to succeed? What happens when you walk in the door and see a white male CEO? I've got every privilege you can imagine. I went to Princeton. I'm tall. <laughs> I mean, actually, that's like a 99% chance of success, right? I was raised by a, an amazing mother, right over there. Hi, Mom. <laughs> That's sort of like cheating in the first place. So I'd love to attribute all of my success to my great sense of humor and my uh, brilliant technical abilities, but I think we do have to acknowledge that there's so much privilege built in to being me that I have to do everything possible to help others have all the privileges that I've had, even without being tall and hilarious and uh, <laughs> male and white and all of that. So for me, having all of you here is a great honor and privilege. And I think it's also, in some ways, a great competitive advantage. If we can recruit women, if we can nurture the careers of women, if we can help you as you develop and grow, really bring all of your skills, your perspectives, your diverse abilities. And let's be honest, some of the perseverance that you've had to, had, had to have to be successful then think about how great AppNexus and other organizations who are so committed to building the careers of a more diverse group can be. So I wanna thank you, all of you, for being here, for participating, uh, and really for, for standing up, for leading, and being role models for everyone else who's following in your footsteps. Thank you very much.